On most mainstream websites, there will be a button that says login with Google that if you click it will allow you to log in with your Google account instead of having to create a brand new account for whatever site that you're on. This is super convenient as a user, but as a developer, you may be wondering, how can I add this to my web app? That's what this video is for. Here I just have a React web app that I created using V that just has two pages using React Router, the landing page, and the home page. The first thing you'll want to do is search React OAuth, and this library from npm should pop up, and you'll want to head to this page. This is the documentation for the library that we'll be using. To install the library, take this command right here, go ahead and copy it, and then head back into your code, open up your terminal, and then we're just going to run this command to install this library. Once you've done that, let's get your Google account set up. Chances are you probably already have a Google account, but if you haven't used Google Cloud before, head to console.cloud.google.com and it'll ask you to sign into an account. Once you do, it may ask you to create a project right away. Name it whatever you'd like. If it didn't ask you to create a project, go up here to this menu right here, and you can manually create your own project. Once you've created the project, you should be at your main project page. On this page, click on Dashboard, and you should be met with a page that looks something like this. There's a lot of stuff going on here, but we're just going to focus on the left-hand side of the screen where it says APIs and Services. Hover over this and go to the part where it says Credentials and click on it. On this page, you should see three main fields here, but the only field that we're actually worried about is this OAuth 2.0 Client IDs. This Client ID is what will actually allow us to connect our app to the Google login service. Without it, we can't access it. To go ahead and create it, go up here and click Create Credentials and click this one right here. And it'll ask us to fill out a couple of things. So I'll open this, click Web App, and then we'll just name this something simple. We'll say React App. And then for the authorized JavaScript ordins right here, we just want to add two things. We want to add, if we're on localhost, just this. And then we will also want to add localhost with the port as well, which ours is 5173 by default. Once we've done that, go ahead and click create. Now we have this client ID here, which is really important for accessing the library that we're going to be using. But before we get back to our code, head over to the OAuth consent screen. I've already created mine, but if you haven't yet created yours, it'll ask you to go through a few steps that will look something like this. Just a couple of things for the sake of creation. The most important thing on this page is that on the test users field here, that you add whatever email you wanna to use to test in your React app. For right now, the only login emails that will work are ones included in this test users list. If you wanna make it available to everyone, for example, on an app that is gonna be deployed, you need to click this publish app button to open it up to all Google users. Once you've done all this, we're good to go on the Google side. Head back to credentials, Take the client ID that you generated a moment ago, go ahead and copy it, and now let's get back into the code. Head to your main.jsx file or wherever the entry point for your app is. First at the top here, import Google OAuth provider from the React OAuth library. Next, just like strict mode is wrapping around the app here, we're going to wrap this Google OAuth provider component around app as well. With both opening and closing tags. Next, let's go up here and create a variable for our client ID. We'll say const client ID equals, and we're gonna do quotes and then paste in the client ID that we copied from Google. If you're actually serious about deploying this app, don't put your ID directly in the code like this. You'll wanna use environment variables like vSupports to hide it. The last thing we need to do on this page is go into the tag here with our Google OAuth provider, and we need to add a prop that is just client ID and we can pass in the client ID. Once you've done that, go ahead and save this page and navigate to whichever page you want the Google login to be on. For me, it is the landing page. In here, we can go at the top and we can import a component that is called Google Login from the React OAuth library. This component is the one that actually renders the login. So in our code, let's just delete this landing page here and let's render in that component. This component should take in two props. The first one, the only required prop, is on success. And this should be a function that tells the component what to do if the login is successful. The next one, an optional one, is the opposite. It should be on error. And this function will be executed if the login fails. For the on error one, we can say something super simple, like we'll just console log it out. We'll say console.log, login failed. In this on success prop right here, let's capture a parameter. Let's just call it credential response and make an error function here, and let's just console log it out. I've split my web app with my console here, and if you look over at the web app, you can see we have this sign in with Google button. If I click it and go ahead and confirm and sign in with my account, 
over here in the console, it logs out the credential response object. We've got three fields in this object. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see better. We have client ID, credential, and select by. The credential field right here is what's really important. When dealing with authentication and authorization, authentication tokens are super important, and that's exactly what this credential string is right here. This credential string right here is a standard JSON web token. So if you needed the user's email, first name, last name, or anything like that, what you could do is if you go back into your code, you could import a JSON web token decoder like JWT decode from the JWT decode library, which I've already installed in this app. If you want to see what a decoded token looks like, we can go here where we're going our on success prop and let's just log out JWT decode credential response. And the token is in the credential field. So we can type dot credential. If I go ahead and save this now and head back to our page and I go and sign in again with Google, you can see we have the credential object again right here, but under it, we have the decoded JSON web token, which has a lot of user information. So we have important things like email, last name, first name, full name, and so forth. And this is really useful if you need to extract user information for your app. One of the most common things to do once a login is successful would be to redirect somewhere else. Since we have a home page already set up in our app, we could import use navigate from React Router DOM. So we'll import that up here. And then we'll go into our code here. We'll say const navigate equals use navigate. And then we can easily add some navigation by in our on success prop here, just adding navigate. And we want to navigate to the home page. Now, if I head over to my web app here and I go through the sign in process, we are now on the home page. If you want to turn on automatic sign ins for users that have already logged in in the past, you can create another prop within this Google login component just called auto underscore select, and you'll want to set it equal to true. If you're using this Google login component, one thing the docs recommend doing is importing the Google logout function from the same exact library. And then if you have a event handler where we're handling a logout somewhere in your app, like for instance, let's say we had a function called handle logout, we would want to call this Google logout function to ensure that Google logs out properly. If you want to change the way this button looks right here, you can pass an additional props to this Google login component. If you check the docs for React OAuth and you scroll down to the bottom, there should be a table here that shows you all the different props you can do in terms of customization. So you have things like type, theme, size, text, and shape that will all affect how the button is actually shaped in your web app. Feel free to customize it as you see fit. This rundown I've given you should be sufficient for the vast majority of projects. However, if you're wanting to get a bit more involved and get things like access tokens for other Google API services or refresh tokens on top of that, you'll need to follow the instructions on this GitHub page. This page is in the issues tab of the actual React OAuth library and it's created by the creator of the library itself. So if you want to get the full stack functionality with access tokens and refresh tokens, he shows how to do it right here. So I'll zoom in a tiny bit. And essentially we need to use this use Google login hook from the same React OAuth library. And it's very similar in its layout to the Google login component in that it has this on success property that you need to pass in a function that will execute whenever the login is successful. The big difference is if you're doing this with the full stack functionality, you'll want to add this flow auth code as another property to the object. You can see in this example here, he's using Axios to do a post route with this route here that he created using Express. You can show you the Express implementation if we scroll down. A pretty standard Express setup with the addition of adding the OAuth to client and initializing the client right here. And here is the actual route that we're looking at that he called in the front end. The get token method here is what's actually important. That's what gives you your access token or your refresh token. If you wanna generate some new tokens, that's this Express route right here, which you can see is how he did it just using this refresh access token method. Again, I'll link this page in the description so it's easier to reference if you did want to add the full stack functionality to connect somewhere to your backend. And with that, we're going to end this video here. This React OAuth library makes it very easy to implement Google Login, and I hope this video was able to help you with managing Google Logins. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you in a future video.